Welcome everyone. I am Autumn Shook. I work for the Kansas Department of Agriculture. Thank you for joining the 10th of our monthly webinar series presentations titled Holiday Gatherings. Here are some quick housekeeping points that I'm sure many of you already know. Number one, all participant microphones will be muted throughout the webinar. Number two, please submit questions during the presentation using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We do encourage these questions to be typed in during the presentation so that they can be quickly addressed at the, at the end. Uh, number three, regulatory considerations covered today um, are only applicable to those operating in Kansas. And four, today's session is gonna be recorded and posted online as usual. And number five, after this session, you will receive an email with the link to the recording if you wanna watch it again or share it with a friend and um, some of the resource materials as well. The email will also contain a link to a survey that your ideas will be considered uh, for future outreach. So um, without further ado, I want to introduce to you Gabby and Pat. They're two field inspectors um, with our food safety and lodging program speaking to you today. So let's get started. Welcome to our webinar on holiday gatherings. Food safety when preparing for large groups in your home. I would like to reiterate that if you have questions, please enter them into the chat as you think of them. We have found it to be helpful for everyone to see the questions or concerns others have because you are not the only one who has them. Let's get started, shall we? My name is Gabby Garrett. My colleague, Pat Parker, and I will be discussing holiday gatherings and food safety. We are both food safety inspectors in the state of Kansas. By following the food safety tips being shared today, you and your loved ones will be sure to enjoy time together and reduce your chances of a foodborne illness. Today, we are discussing the things we can all do to ensure food safety. Good hygiene, knowledge of proper food temperatures, such as cooking, holding, and cooling leftovers, and simple food safety tips are among the topics we will be covering today. Over the last two years, we have learned a lot about hand washing and its importance. Washing hands is everyone's responsibility. Hand washing is the first and most important step in food safety. As a general rule of thumb, always use soap and warm water, vigorously rub together for at least 20 seconds, then rinse. Use a paper towel or a clean cloth to dry your hands. Be sure whoever is handling food is healthy. If you are feeling under the weather, do not help prepare any food. Healthy food handlers should properly wash their hands, but remember, even with hand washing, we still have germs on our hands. Do not touch any ready to eat foods with your bare hands. Use a utensil or put disposable gloves on to help prepare and serve food. Cross-contamination can occur when you are working with different types of raw animal proteins. One way to prevent cross-contamination is by storing your foods properly. You want to store all ready-to-eat foods on the top shelves, then your raw animal foods on the lower shelves. Animal foods should be stored by cooking temperatures. This means all poultry should be stored at the very bottom, then ground meats, and pooled or scrambled egg mixtures, and next, your whole muscle meats, such as beef, pork, fish, and in-shell eggs. As I just mentioned, you would then store your ready-to-eat or previously cooked and cooled foods on the very top. Turkey is one of the staples to holiday gatherings. There are many ways to thaw your Thanksgiving turkey. The safest method is under refrigeration. This process can take the longest amount of time though. The size of your bird will affect how long this process takes. If you find that your turkey has not thawed completely, you can fully submerge it in cold running water for a couple of hours before cooking begins. The last option to thaw is to use the microwave, if your turkey can fit, then continue to cook immediately afterwards. This is the quickest method However, it may not produce the best quality bird. 
You can begin to cook if your turkey hasn't thawed completely. Just make sure you cook it longer and use your probe thermometer in the thickest portion to verify the turkey has reached 165 degrees. Several factors can affect the cooking time for your turkey. Bird size, oven size, and the stuffing inside your turkey are things to consider when planning your holiday cooking. For example, a 12 to 14 pound unstuffed turkey will take approximately three to 3.75 hours, while a stuffed turkey, the same weight, will take approximately three and a half to four hours to cook. If you are stuffing your turkey, make sure your stuffing also reaches 165 degrees. If not, some bacteria might be remaining that could make your dinner guest sick. Because of this reason, some people choose to cook their stuffing separately from their turkey. Whichever method you choose, make sure your stuffing reaches an internal temperature of 165 degrees with your food probe thermometer before serving it. If your holiday meal involves a ham instead of turkey, be sure to reheat your pre-cooked pork to 135 degrees. Similar to turkey, the size of your ham will affect the time needed in the oven. Use your thermometer to ensure your ham has reached 135 degrees or above. How do you know when your holiday feast is ready? The best way of checking the internal temperature is to use a probe thermometer. On the left is a data logger, which continuously monitors your cooking temperatures. Most kitchens should have a food probe thermometer like the one on the top right. Most tur turkey processors also insert an indicator in the thickest part shown on the bottom right picture that pops up when 165 degrees has been reached. You can find basic food probe thermometers at your local retail stores. Now Pat is gonna share with you some additional food safety tips. Hi, I'm Pat. And if you'd like to deep fry your turkey, please follow these safety tips. If you finished thawing your turkey in water, be sure your turkey is completely dry. Pat the turkey dry with a paper towel because oil and water don't mix. Never leave the hot oil unattended and don't allow children or pets near the cooking area. Immediately wash hands, utensils, and equipment and surfaces that have come in contact with raw turkey and allow the oil to cool completely before disposal or storage. Deep frying turkey has become a popular method of holiday cooking. Too many accidents happen around the holidays. Don't get distracted while cooking. We want you to be safe and enjoy the day with your family. We often have casseroles during holiday times. Like stuffed turkeys, these should be cooked to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. With all foods, take a temperature at the thick part of your food to make sure internal temperatures are consistent throughout the dish. If you are a guest contributing and transporting food for dinner, keep your hot foods hot and cold foods cold. What does this really mean? Well, during transport, your foods must not fall below 135 degrees, and cold foods must not warm up greater than 41 degrees. Transport in insulated containers and take temperatures when you arrive. You can always heat your foods back up to 165 degrees and cool your foods down to 41 degrees or below before dinner starts if it has not been greater than four hours since you took temperatures last. Likewise, when the food has been set out for all to fill their plates, be aware that bacteria and food will start to reproduce rapidly after four hours in room temperature. This is known as the temperature danger zone. It's safest to discard all perishable foods if they have sat on the counter for more than four hours. When putting your leftovers away, please begin this process within two hours. This will give the food time to cool down if done properly. Here are ways to do this. Refrigerate or freeze leftover food in shallow containers. If refrigerated, use leftovers within seven days. 
prepared on Thursday, good until Wednesday. If prepared on Saturday, good till Friday. You get the idea. When reheating, heat to internal temperatures of 165 degrees or above. Checking in several spots with your thermometer. You can find great information at www.foodsafety.gov or on the Partnership for Food Safety Education at www.fightback, don't use a K, dot org. That's www.fightback, dot org. One of the best parts of holiday gatherings are the desserts. Food safety for pies depends on the type of filling used. Fruit pies do not require refrigeration for safety and may be stored on the counter. This can include apple, cherry, or peach, for example. Pumpkin and cream pies contain dairy and can grow bacteria that cause foodborne illness. Hold these pies at 41 degrees or less and no longer than seven days total, once baked or thawed. Sweets are a must at my home during the holidays. Make sure you are aware of the ingredients and keep space in your refrigerator. When baking meringues, frostings, or icings that contain raw eggs or dairy, they need to be kept at 41 degrees or below for safety and should be eaten within seven days. Frosting ingredients include real butter, cream cheese, or milk. If you are using these ingredients that require refrigeration, you might think about using other ingredients such as margarine or crispy <laughs> frostings. If the meringue is not fully cooked, and some pies have that, it is best to let your guests know they are eating a raw product. Raw eggs can lead to salmonella. For more information about food safety and baked goods, a great resource is K-State Research and Extension's Farmer's Market Guide. Let's recap our Thanksgiving and holiday gatherings food safety tips. A simple way to promote food safety is practicing good personal hygiene, such as hand washing and avoiding food prep when sick. Use your thermometer to monitor your foods while cooking, cooling, and reheating as these are important temperatures for each process. Make sure all turkeys, stuffed turkeys, casseroles, and leftovers are brought to an internal temperature of 165 degrees, consumed within four hours, or refrigerated within two hours. And enjoy your family and friends in good health. So as we wrap up today's presentation, we would like to remind everyone we are recording all of our presentations, including today's. Earlier this year, we have discussed cooling and reheating, pest control, as well as limiting the spread of germs. Please visit our Food Protection Task Force webpage to view these free recordings. As a reminder, these recordings are geared towards food establishments, but have great tips that can be followed at home as well. If you would like to learn more about food safety at home, here are some additional resources or websites. The FDA, USDA, and CDC all have tons of food safety information on their websites. K-State Research and Extension offices are located throughout the state, and foodsafety.gov also has many resources available. I hope you found the information we covered today helpful. If you ever have any questions about food safety when cooking for large groups, please feel free to contact us. You'll also find educational materials on our website to help you with all aspects of food safety. Now, I'll turn you over to Dana for the question and answer session. Dana. Great, thanks a bunch, Pat. I really, really appreciate that. Um, we did have some questions come in directly to me. And so I want to start off. Gabby, this one came in early on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when you talked about hand washing, um, and I know that we've covered that separately as well, but what about if folks have towels handy, washcloths handy, et cetera, and dealing with poultry, um, as um, many do at restaurants and at home more frequently. Can you give us some tips um, about those that have more of cloths with it versus disposable items? 
Yeah, of course. So with cloths, you can use cloths, um, clean, a clean, dry cloth to dry your hands when you're doing hand washing. You want to make sure, though, that that cloth doesn't get, you know, really wet and soiled because um, that could defeat the purpose of hand washing. Um, as far as the poultry, I'm not entirely sure what the question is with that and the cloths. Um, we just hear a lot more, <clears throat> excuse me, about poultry during the holidays with that, if that helps. Yeah, so um, like we covered with the poultry, you wanna make sure that you keep that separate from all of your other ready to eat foods and your other animal proteins because chicken and poultry have a higher cooking temperature. You wanna cook those up to 165 degrees. Um, so make sure you keep those separate. And then of course, you know, wash your hands after handling that raw poultry. Great, thank you. I think that's where that question was headed with that. I want to, um, Talk a little bit about frozen turkeys for either you or Pat, whoever wants to answer this question is, uh, the question came in, can I cook my turkey frozen? Sure, I can take that one. My, unfortunately my video is not working, but hope everybody can hear me. Um, so turkeys are a large mass, correct? And so, um, there we go. I can start my video. Um, turkeys are a large mass. And obviously when you're cooking, you're, it's cooking from the outside in, correct? And so the inside is what takes longer to, to cook. Um, it can be cooked from frozen as long as you follow the right directions. Um, it's, it's always recommended that it's going to be fully thawed. But if you follow directions to the letter, you can cook it from frozen, not totally frozen but partially maybe maybe it just hasn't fully thawed in that refrigerator you know and instead of putting it into water especially if you're going to deep fat fry it um you know it's just difficult to 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 say it just depends on your process and and if you're following just be very very careful especially if it's if you're frying it because you know water ice crystals they don't mix with with oil we don't want to have an accident on that one but if it's roasting yeah, it can be done. 165, check it with the Absolutely. thermometer. Absolutely, in important. the thickest part. <laughs> we had a comment come in on the chat about um, recommend recommendations on rinsing uh, poultry. Uh, common practice, not common practice, has that changed for those at establishments or those cooking at home? Uh, Autumn, you wanna go ahead and take this one? Yeah, I can take that. So um, a lot of people want to rinse the bird. I don't really know why. I don't know if it's uh, something that your grandmother did or I don't recall my grandma ever doing that, but maybe I just wasn't in the kitchen when she was doing that process. So um, really the concern is contamination of the sink and everything around it. So if you're washing the bird, water splashes on it. And I know right next to my sink is this nice clean dishes rack, right? And so I worry about anything that splashes onto my clean dishes because they're not going to be washed. So, I mean, it could be anything. It could be that towel that you're going to wash your hands with. So it's not that it's not really the act of rinsing it that's the problem. It's what does the rinsing cause? Um, it's, it's just kind of a risky uh, practice that is really unnecessary. If you're having to rinse off Salmonella can't be rinsed off. So there's really no point in it, I guess. Looks like um, Adam put a link in there or several links to some great websites because there's a million different resources when it comes to cooking turkey. Well, Everyone great. has a holiday. <laughs> yeah, and I know our friends that are logged in today appreciate that as well. Um, we'll make sure those are posted after the fact on the resources page for those that'll be watching at a later time. Um, I have a question, Pat, on desserts that came up. Um, you know, we really rely on those in, in the industry to make sure that they have those temperatures logged, et cetera. Um, you know, how do we know as consumers that that's being done? Um, because there is a lot of extra things that go on at Thanksgiving, Christmas, other holidays throughout um, the season with that. Can you give us some tips on what comes in um, from the inspector point of view um, to make sure that our um, licensees 
um, can let their consumers know, their clients know that, that things are good to go? So um, let's see if I can see if I'm understanding this question correctly. Um, we're wanting, the, is the operators wanting to know how do they know their baked goods are safe to serve to the consumers? Yes. What's the easiest way to, to let consumers know um, that, you know, we've got some really great things going on, some new stuff during the November, December, et cetera, that, that we're good to go, that we're meeting the needs um, from our inspectors, that we're doing everything great. Sure. So I've always said, you know, one of your best friends is your thermometers, right? So use your thermometer. You know, it'll tell you if it's the right temperature or not. Baked goods, you know, once it gets baked and it's, and it's fully cooked, and how do you check, how do you check your cake if it's, if it's fully cooked? How do you know? What did your grandmother teach you? You know, you stick the, the, the cake tester in, then, you know, it, and it, nothing comes back out of it, then, you know, done stick to it, then it's, then it's good. Um, if you're wondering if that's the right temperature, it's not sticking, right? Use your thermometer, find out if that's the right temperature. It's, it's good. Obviously, you know, 145, 155, if it's raw eggs, it was whole raw eggs. It was, you know, I mean, the sugars in it, that sort of stuff. Candies, doing candies is um, not a potentially hazardous food. Uh, so that's, I don't know how, how, how to say that. Now, when we get into pies, custard pies, then yeah, you know, you're looking for that, for that 155, right? Because it was scrambled eggs and then you cooked them and, you know, um, if it was whole eggs, it wouldn't be that high. Um, again, always you rely on your thermometer. Um, and then if it's a custard egg, you, you know, after you pull it out and once it reaches that 135 mark, get it in the refrigerator, get it to cool down, cool down properly so that you won't make anybody sick. Meringues, I always recommend them to be fully cooked. I do know that some people, and we did mention it on this webinar about um, having partially cooked meringues. Um, to eat your own, but make sure that they're, you, you're letting your people know that it isn't a fully cooked product. Looks like Adam maybe want to weigh in on this a little bit. He's... Yeah, I'll just tag on there that it, um, you know, summarize it is if you follow the food code, if you're a business that's doing um, just your normal operations, maybe you've added something different. If you follow the food code, those requirements, you're going to be on the right path. And then if you have any specific questions, definitely reach out to us and we'd love to help you work through those. And then for the consumers in our audience, um, you know, there's great resources. We put the FAQs from the USDA in their consumer guidance to help you with your specific holiday meal questions. But then we can also link you with, with, with uh, good resources. And of course, for consumers, there's no, nobody beats uh, K-State Research and Extension. So your local FACS agent um, is a tremendous resource for consumers. Great. We had a question come in um, on the Q&A. So whomever on the team wants to, to handle this, it's on pumpkin pies. Uh, we see a lot of those on the shelves in, in supermarkets and other places with that. And I know there are hundreds of recipes for a pumpkin pie. So um, what's the latest on pumpkin pies and on the shelf? Yeah, that's a, that's a wonderful question. The it's really intriguing. You just think of maybe food safety is kind of on the surface, seems easy. But as you mentioned, Dana, everybody has their little creative spin on a recipe and that can change the chemistry of that product and that can change the microbiological risk of that product. So the ones you'll see shelf stable that are just out at room temperature on a grocer's shelf, those go through product testing and formulation to make sure that they, they can be done, they can be displayed that way and sold that way safely to the consumer. But just a traditional recipe, you don't have that guarantee. So we recommend that you handle that as a food that requires temperature control for safety. Great, I appreciate that um, from the food safety team and, and Adam, because I do know, like I say, there are lots of recipes um, and a lot of great recipes out there. Uh, I don't see any more questions in the Q&A. Those that um, are participating online, if you have something you'd like to ask, go ahead and get that typed in right now. If not, we'll end a few minutes early with it. Um, Gabby, do you have any great parting words with it um, after your presentation that, that you'd like to add? 
Um, no, just remember, you know, this holiday season, make sure you guys are washing your hands, using your food probe thermometer, and just enjoy time with your family. Pat, what about you? Don't overeat. No, just stay, stay, yeah, I always do. Um, you know, stay safe, follow, follow, follow the science, and um, like Gabby said, wash your hands, use your thermometers, and everybody will have a great time, and they'll enjoy your food. Well, great. With that, um, Adam's added another link into the chat. Autumn, I'll turn it back over to you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you all for attending today's session. This recorded session is going to be posted on our Food Protection Task Force section of our website that Pat had mentioned earlier, along with uh, registration for next month's webinar. We'll actually be covering specialized food processes, so a pretty um, intricate um, discussion on, on special processes that you may not know about. Um, look for the survey immediately following this webinar to assist us with planning um, the future outreach webinars. Thanks again for attending.